In today's video, I want to address um, one of the main talking points of the video that I posted a couple of days ago, which if you haven't watched, will be linked in the description. You can watch it in either order, to be fair. But I want to expand on my reasoning for why I'm not that excited for the upcoming World Championship match between Ding Loren and Gukesh Domaraju. I know it's Gukesh D, but I think it's Domaraju. Um, I'm not... Quite, quite a few of the comments, which I understand the reasoning for, um, were kind of confused as to why I was like seemingly belittling either of the players, which was not my intention. And I'm sure that the vast majority of viewers knew that that wasn't my intention because obviously they're world-class chess players. They wouldn't be in the world championship if they weren't. That's not what I'm trying to do. I think a better way for me to phrase this is to say that I'm not excited for the world championship now don't get me wrong i will be watching every day and i will be watching every game because it's the chess world championship of course it's one of the most exciting events in the chess like calendar alongside the candidates probably although i probably would say that the candidates like this year's candidates probably more exciting i mean we're yet to see what the um world championship match will hold but like from um build-up perspective we're still a long way off from it i think it's in november december time but i want to run run through some of my reasoning for why i'm not very excited for it first of all and probably the most obvious is that there is no magnus and this was the case with the previous world championship but obviously there was all the drama of magnus stepping down sort of last minute because he only wanted to play ali razor because Nepo was going to play Magnus, and Magnus has already had already beaten Nepo quite convincingly, and didn't want to play him again. By the way, there's just some bullet games playing in the background that I pre-recorded. The final one is um like really cool, by the way, uh, like a really cool Karo Khan game. I don't know whether we'll get to that. It depends how long I talk for. But um anyway, there's no Magnus, right? And it's not the the has to be Magnus for a chess match to be exciting, because Magnus obviously wasn't in the most recent candidates. He hasn't been in the candidates for a while, obviously, and probably never will again. Um, but the candidates were still a fantastic tournament, probably one of my favourite in recent memory. But the issue is that what I was trying to get across in the previous video was that the fact that there's no Magnus in the World Championship match kind of delegitimizes the match in my eyes. I'm not saying it won't be a fun match. I'm not saying there won't be incredibly high-level chess played at the match. By the way, my opponent got me in some like really annoying trap in uh, this game. I was really annoyed about it. Um, there'll be some incredibly high-level chess on display, right? But my problem is that whoever wins the World Championship title is not the best player in the world. And I know commenters on my previous video have pointed out that when Karpov inherited the title in 1974, for example, because Fischer wouldn't play, Karpov was still an amazing player. And I agree, he's one of the all-time greats. But in 1974, when he inherits the title, is he, like, the legitimate world champion? Because he wasn't the best player in the world, really. Because Fischer was, right? I'm sure that everyone thought that. Does that mean Karpov's a bad player? Obviously not. Karpov is one of the best chess players ever, right? He, like, held Kasparov, like, to um, some incredible matches over uh, the, what, like, 80s and 90s, right? But I would argue that when he inherits the World Championship title in 1974, he is not the best player in the world. And some people have argued that the best player in the world and the world champion are not the same thing. Which I understand your point, because you're saying that one is calculated off of like rating, one is calculated off of like who wins the world championship match. The winner of the world championship match doesn't necessarily have to be the highest rated player. But the lack of legitimacy in my eyes, because if that's your argument, then the world champion is not the best player in the world. Like, to me, 
that's somewhat of a contradiction because that's what the title world champion would imply that you're the best chess player in the world so i'm obviously aware that you don't have to be the highest rated player in the world to win the title of world champion those things aren't necessarily the same but the fact that like ding when he inherited the world championship title he didn't have to play magnus for it if ding had had to play magnus even if Ding is lower rated than Magnus and he beat him, then I would argue he's a more legitimate world champion, right? But he didn't. Magnus stepped down. And that's not Ding's fault, because Ding didn't ask Magnus to step down, right? But I think there's just a lack of legitimacy there. And you can disagree with me if you want, of course. Like, I'm not saying that I'm correct. This is just my point of view on the matter. And I'd be really interested to know what your counter arguments are in the comments if you do disagree i need to stop why the the bullet games paused for some reason apologies <laughs> um for those of you listening on audio you'll, you'll have no idea what i'm on about um but yeah please let me know what you think on that matter the second point i want to make is kind of linked to the fact that there's no magnus but in previous world championships right let's take you know Magnus versus Anand, or Magnus versus Fabiano, or even like Kasparov versus Karpov, Fischer versus Spassky, all of those world championships, arguably some of the most like exciting world championship matches to happen, all had rivalries, you know? Like Magnus and Fabiano have played each other many times, they've been at each other's throats in classical chess for years. Karpov Kasparov doesn't need any introduction whatsoever. Uh, then you have like Fischer Spassky, which was literally like uh, uh, was marketed as like capitalism versus communism, uh, America versus Russia. Well, the U USSR. Like it had all of those implications, and the rivalry between Fischer and Spassky was therefore elevated because of those political matters. I'm actually writing a dissertation on that sort of thing um, as well as we speak basically it's a really interesting topic um but it had all of those rivalries in it right ding versus gukesh i don't think there's any rivalry i did a bit of research they've played a total of four competitive games against each other and i know that's probably because gukesh is up and coming and he's young he's like what 17 so i understand the reason for that i'm not blaming either player again this is just my observations and why I'm not as excited. They've played two classical games against each other. Two classical, two blitz. Two classical games, ever. Uh, Ding won both of them. I don't know when these were played, but I, I don't think the result is necessarily relevant. Um, but, like, there's no rivalry there. You could argue there's maybe a rivalry between, like, China and India. And, I mean, considering the border scuffles over there, which are, like, fascinating by the way if you don't know about them uh so there will, there will certainly be a political rivalry in that sense and you could argue that that is similar to like um fisher versus spassky in 1972 and the political ramifications of that you could definitely make that argument <laughs> but i don't know i feel like that's maybe a more localized conflict uh like china versus india rather than like capitalism versus communism so, again, that's just my point of view. But from a chess perspective, no rivalry. Spassky Fischer, however, did certainly have rivalry in terms of, like, chess. Not only political, but chess, because they'd played each other in, like, um, what was it? Russia versus the World Tournament. Uh, they played in that. I think they'd played in um Candidates Tournament previously. Spassky had won all of those games, so, you know, Fischer was the definite underdog. Again, you can make the claim that this is similar to Ding versus Gukesh, because Ding has won the previous two classical games. But, I don't know, they're not the same caliber. I, like, I don't even know when they were. I think they were probably just at some, like, random high-level tournament, rather than, like, a candidates. So, again, just my point of view, but I feel like there's a way less of a rivalry between them. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that 
people were saying in the comments of the previous video that I was belittling Ding and Gukesh by saying that they weren't the best in the world. And people were saying, you know, Gukesh won the candidates and he beat the players that I believe are better than him, such as Nepo, Karawana, um, Hikaru. I believe they're better than Gukesh. The FIDE ratings would suggest that they are. And yes, it's not about who's got the higher rating, it's about who wins the games, of course. But, the again, like, if you look at the FIDE rankings at the time of recording, it's the 18th of July 2024, Ding is rated 14th. Now, he did have a terrible tournament in Norway chess, so that certainly contributed to it. But even before Norway chess, he definitely wasn't in, like, the top three or anything, I don't believe. He was way higher rated back in like 2019, 2018, but this isn't 2019 or 2018 of course. So again, I know he's world champion, but like, is he world champion caliber? I don't know. You can feel free to disagree and let me know your point of view, but again, like, he's 14th rated in the world and he's world champion, and Gukesh is 7th. And, I mean, 7th is high, don't get me wrong, like, he's insanely good at chess, he's world class at chess. Is he world championship challenger good at chess? I don't know, did he just have a lucky tournament? I don't think luck is really a fair way to put it, cons considering, like, the tournament, like, he pulled out some incredible wins against, you know, the best players in the world, right? I'm not saying that's not the case. And he pulled, like, he literally just fumbled two games where he was completely winning and then drew one and lost one. One against Ali Reza, I believe. The other one, I don't remember. So I'm not saying it's luck, because arguably he could have done even better than he did. And he already got an incredible score, like plus four or something. But he's, he's not like 2,800, you know? And that's... Considering the past 10 or so years, that's just what we've come to expect from World Championship games, like Fabiano being border 2800, above 2800 previously, and Magnus always being above 2800. Not, the, not quite the same calibre. Again, I'm not saying that either Ding or Gukesh are not like world-class chess players, super grandmasters, obviously they are. But like, it's not the same as Magnus Fabiano, Magnus Nepo, Magnus Anand, like Karpov, Kasparov, Fischer Spassky, I, I, I just don't believe it is. And feel free to disagree, let me know why, but just my thoughts. I know you could of course make the argument that Ding, sorry, Gukesh has less experience because he's young and therefore his rating is lower. And that would be a perfectly valid argument. I can't really disagree with that. But it doesn't change the fact that, again, I believe there's a bit of a lack of legitimacy there. So, again, just, just my thoughts. This video is just me trying to expand on why I said what I said in the previous video. And again, if you didn't watch the previous video, feel free to. It'll be linked below. But also, you can just watch this in isolation. I also believe, which might be a bit of a hot take, right? This might be a bit more of a hot take than the previous ones. Um... I think that Ding should comfortably win. I think that Ding, if he doesn't beat Gukesh, like, fairly comfortably, there's a, there's a bit of a problem, right? Ding has so much more experience. He's been a, like, 2800 sort of player before. He's been playing chess for a very long time at the top level. He's a lot more experienced He's played world championships before. He's been in many candidates tournaments before. He's a lot older. <laughs> you would think that Ding really should beat Gukesh. Gukesh has had an incredible candidates tournament, don't get me wrong. But he's young. He's inexperienced. You've seen that he's completely blundered games against Ali Reza, and I can't remember the other player in the candidates where he was completely winning. Again, this isn't me saying that he's a bad player, but he just lacks the experience that the other players at that level have. And, I mean, you could see that exact same thing with Ali Reza when he was younger. The same was the case. I think Prague is like a sort of um, like a anomaly 
in that sense because he just seems to have incredible levels of maturity in terms of converting advantages, holding on to like potentially losing positions. But Ding, I think, really should win this. He really should. And if he doesn't, if Ding doesn't win the World Championship game, again, this might be a really hot take, then I think there are some concerns because, I mean, as we saw in Norway chess, Ding massively underperformed. He clearly had mental health problems going into that tournament. He hadn't really played any tournaments after his World Championship game before Norway chess. And you could just say it's like a lack of... um a lack of um, sort of being in the right mindset, being in the groove of playing top-level chess tournaments because he took time off, and maybe he just needed to get back into it. But I don't actually know whether he's played many tournaments since Norway Chess, and so many of the players were like, this is not the same guy. Like, there's something up here. And apparently... I don't actually know if this is right, but one of the commenters in the previous video said that Ding himself came out and said in some kind of interview that he'd been like, I don't know whether he was diagnosed, but had some sort of depression thing going on. And I wish him all the best, right? Obviously, everybody does. No one wants to see Ding go down in like an... Not an unfair way, but like... A way that he doesn't deserve. He doesn't deserve to go down, like, lose the World Championship match because he's got mental health, like, issues going on. But if Gukesh wins the World Championship match, and it's not, and if it's not because Gukesh is just playing incredibly, and because it's clear, like, if, if this is the case, right? If it's clear that Ding has some serious mental health concerns in the match and is just playing terribly, like as opposed to um, Gukesh is playing incredibly. Then again, is there not a question of legitimacy then? Because if Ding, if Ding loses to Gukesh because Ding is just playing horribly because he has mental health problems going into it, does Gukesh really beat Ding? Because if he's a shadow of his former self, is that the ding that we've seen in like the years leading up to him becoming world champion, where he was, you know, top five in the world? He's not there anymore. And again, this is, I think, solely, really, because of the mental health problems going on. Again, wish him all the best, right? Everyone does. But is there not a lack of legitimacy there? I mean... Maybe I've said a lot of controversial things in this video because a lot of people disagreed with my take previously on this. I hope this has like expanded a bit more of my reasoning behind why I said what I said. And I do stick by it, really. Like I'm not just going to change my mind because people disagree with me. That would be disingenuous and inauthentic. Feel free to disagree with me. But I hope that some of what I've said, um, I mean, hopefully most of what I've said, at least makes sense. Even if you disagree, I hope it at least makes sense. And please, let me know what you think. Feel free to have, like, not have a go at me. Don't, like, be horrible about it. But disagree with me and explain your thought process. We're all chess players here. We can be pragmatic about this, right? And pretty much all of you were very, um, like, reasonable in your arguments and disagreements with me in the previous video, which I just want to say thank you very much for, because we've got a pretty good community going on this channel, and if this is your first time seeing this channel, then hey, check out some of my, pre some of my other content. I do a lot of gameplay um, and explaining like my thought process while I play. If you haven't seen the previous video that I'm referencing so much here, then the card will be somewhere on the screen right now. So. Have a look at that. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.